and welcome to part three of our washi demos. In this video, I'm going to show you several approaches to make decorative elements in your paper. The first will be to make a desired shape using a stencil. Following that, we'll learn to embed into a new sheet of paper pieces of that stencil or other papers or other prints. And then I'll also show you several ways to work with colored fibers to make various effects, cloudy effects, different textures, gradients, etc. The first technique we'll cover is how to form sheets of paper into a desired shape using a stencil. Cut your shape out of parchment or butcher paper that is just shy of the size of your Sucetta screen. This parchment paper should be pre-soaked in water and dried to prevent it from shrinking. Place the cut stencil on your Sucetta screen and submerge it in water. Lift the Sucetta and press the stencil flat to your screen, pushing out any air bubbles or folds. Now form layers of paper as you normally would. For this example, I've mixed approximately 30 grams of dyed Tosa fibers with a small bucket of water and about a cup of Tuorawi. The area of my stencil is quite small, so I only need this much to form a fairly thick paper. The parchment paper stencil will keep my mixture from draining quickly, so each pass through the Sucetta takes time. You may notice that I often rotate my Sucetta when forming my paper. This is not necessary, but I feel that it helps me to ensure nice even layers are formed. When you are finished forming your paper, clean the fibers around the edges of your stencil using tweezers. Gently lift the bundles of fiber from the screen. Then carefully lift the parchment paper stencil starting with the largest uncut side. Work slowly. When dry, remove your shaped paper using tweezers. Now we'll learn how to embed our shaped paper into a newly formed sheet of washi. This technique can also be done with oil and water-based prints cut out and collaged. Here I am working with 60 grams of Koza fibers total to make a thicker sheet of washi. You can see my mixture is slightly blue. I mixed 15 grams of dyed Tosa fibers with 45 grams of natural Mitsumata fibers to create a cool white paper with a very subtle blue hue.
After I've built up four or five layers of my fiber mixture, I will lay the sucata flat and place my cutout prints and shaped paper where I want them. Note that these papers can be left dry. They will soak up moisture from the fiber mixture on our screen easily. Paper pieces can be layered to a point. We will seal off these paper scraps with more fiber mixture. Now I'll pour several more layers of fiber mixture over my image. Note that the more layers you pour, the more opaque the paper will become. More layers will make your prints and paper scraps less visible. You will notice that your mixture will drain through the sucata more slowly. This is because of the paper scraps blocking parts of the screen, much like the stencil process. I poured four more layers here, and as you will see in the finished result, the pink blob forms will become much lighter and white little fibers will be very visible on the surface of the paper. And here's the finished product. Now I'll show you how to make a gradient in your paper using dyed fibers. I am working with 40 grams of natural Mitsumata fibers and 20 grams of dyed Tosa fibers. Form your first layers of paper as usual. I made about eight layers here for a very opaque white paper. Leave your sucata sit flat while you prepare your second fiber mixture. This will allow the fibers to set slightly. Mix the dyed fibers with a bit more Tororawi than before. This will slow the drainage through your sucata, allowing you more control over your fiber mixture. You can add more Tororawi to each incremental layer if necessary. When you are ready to pour your dyed fibers, prop the sucata at an angle. Keeping it angled, slowly pour your dyed fiber mixture along the bottom edge then lift up just slightly and allow the fiber mixture to creep up the screen. You may find yourself holding the sucata still more than sloshing it back and forth. Do what feels most natural to guide the fibers where you desire.
are some examples of what this process can achieve. I'll show you another fun trick that can be done at this stage, which creates a wave-like effect. Leave your formed gradient paper to rest flat for about 10 minutes. During this time, I've filled a good quality spray bottle with water. This bottle can spritz a fairly small and powerful stream of water. Tilt your saccata again and spritz water in short bursts along the width of the paper to reveal the white layers of fiber underneath. Leave your saccadas to dry overnight, flat or at an angle. I'll show you one more trick, which I found to be quite fussy and as a novice, results may vary. First though, let's take a quick walk through the process of forming a basic sheet of paper again. Here I'm weighing out 40 grams of fibers. After beating them, I pinch off little bundles and add them to my buckets of water. I mix this with a hand beater and add my Tororawi. I form several thin, even layers of the fiber mixture and pick out any undesirable bits with tweezers. And leave my saccata to set for a few minutes. Now here's where it gets tricky. I'll carefully submerge the sucetta in a pool of water and gently swish the fibers around. As you can see, I'm fighting trapped air underneath the sucetta, so I've chosen to rotate it and dip it from both sides. This won't always be the case. This will create a cloudy effect in my paper. The fibers will separate into amorphic bundles. Here's another example where I've fully submerged the sucetta and I'm manipulating the fibers with my fingers. This approach, however, will not produce flat paper. Rather, it will be highly textured with natural ridges and creases. After either approach, we will reinforce the paper with another few layers of our fiber mixture before we set it aside to dry. The possibilities with washi are endless. It takes practice to make a fine sheet of paper and develop consistency, but it's a lot of fun along the way. I hope you've enjoyed these washi making demos. Thanks so much for watching.